The pulmonary rehabilitation education sessions will have five topics. Managing a flare-up, managing breathlessness, mental well-being, the benefits of activity and medication for your lungs. This is the fifth session and we're going to be talking about the different types of medication that you can have for your lungs from inhalers and the different types of inhalers and we'll touch on nebulizers at the end. Let's start by talking about inhalers. The most commonly used medication in lung diseases are delivered via inhalers and they are prescribed if you've had a persistent symptom of breathlessness. The main aim is to open up the airways. This will allow air to flow through the lungs and oxygen to get into the blood. Some inhalers are classed as a reliever. These will act fast in order to relieve the symptoms. And there are others that are called controllers. These act over a period of time to help to control the symptoms of breathlessness. Inhalers also vary in the form of the medication. Some are a pressurised gas and some are a dry powder. Having the correct inhaler for you and having the correct technique is key to managing your symptoms. All inhalers contain a drug and they are prescribed to help to optimise your condition management. You should therefore make sure that you take your inhalers as they have been prescribed. This might be once a day, twice a day or as and when you need it. Even if you're feeling well and your breathlessness is better, you must still take your inhalers as required and discuss with your GP or doctor about your medication regime. There are many different types of inhalers. And if you find that you're struggling with the, to take the inhaler, struggling to press the button, or are having some side effects, then you must make sure that you speak to your healthcare practitioner or your GP, because there might be other alternatives that they can try you with. There are three groups of inhalers. There's the relievers, the controllers, and preventers which we will discuss on the next slide. Relievers tend to be the short acting inhalers. These will act within a couple of minutes to help to ease the symptoms of breathlessness. The effects of these relievers and short acting inhalers will only last for a few hours. Examples of such inhalers are salbutamol and bricanil. The second group of inhalers are controllers, or longer lasting. These work more slowly over a 12 to 24 hour period. You would often only take these inhalers once a day or perhaps twice a day, morning and evening. Examples of these are Spireva or Cerevent. Sometimes you will have inhalers which are longer acting controllers that have more than one type of drug in them. Some people may require steroid inhalers. These can be termed as a preventer inhaler. They're taken regularly in order to reduce the inflammation and scarring on your lungs. Steroid inhalers work over a period of time and they build up their action. So they shouldn't be taken as and when, they should normally be taken on a regular basis. Some steroid drugs will be mixed with some of the controllers, so that will give you a combination steroid inhaler, such as the Relvar or the Trimbo. They will have a controller and a preventer aspect to that inhaler. If they're able to combine the controller and the preventer, then it means that there's less inhalers for you to be taking. When you use your steroid inhaler or your preventer, 
This helps to reduce the inflammation or the swelling that can be found in your airways, allowing more air to flow through. Some steroid inhalers can also protect you from some triggers such as pollen or dust mites if you have more of an asthmatic component. If you have protection from triggers and wider airways for the air to flow through, then you get less breathlessness, therefore fewer symptoms. There are a variety of inhaler devices which are available to deliver your medication. These include soft mist inhaler, an MDI, an easy breathe, a dry powder inhaler or in a dry powder capsule. The Sheffield Hospital's video library has videos which demonstrate how to use your inhaler. The link is included on this slide and it's worth watching these videos to make sure that you're taking your inhaler correctly because if you have a good technique then you're optimising the management of your condition. So let's talk in a bit more detail about a group of inhalers, which are the aerosol inhalers. So these include the MDI, which is a metered dose inhaler. This is a pressurised medication that delivers a puff of propellant and medication on each release. The chemical propellant is needed in order to produce the spray. When taking an MDI, you remove the cap Shake it firmly about five times, exhale, so breathe out, not into the mouthpiece, just empty your lungs, then make a seal around the mouthpiece, inhale slowly, press the canister to release the medication and continue to inhale for about three to five seconds, hold your breath for 10 seconds. If you are to take the MDI inhaler twice, Make sure that you wait 30 seconds between breaths and that you give it a good shake between the doses. It's good to practice taking your MDI inhaler in front of a mirror to make sure that you don't see any mist leaking out from your mouth. This means that you haven't got a good enough seal or you're not holding your breath for long enough. Then there's the Easy Breathe inhaler. This is triggered by your breath in. So with this inhaler, you would shake your inhaler before use, fold down the cap, again breathe out to empty your lungs not into the mouthpiece. Once you've taken that breath out, place the mouthpiece in and make a seal with your lips. Start to breathe in and as you breathe in you'll feel a puff of medication. Continue to take this breath in, again inhaling for 3 to 5 seconds, then hold your breath. If you need to take a second breath, breath of the easy breath inhaler just wait for one minute before repeating. The other aerosol inhaler is a soft mist inhaler such as a recipe map. This is when a medication is converted into a fine mist that's inhaled. This fine mist allows more of the medication to pass from the throat into the lungs. If it's the first time that you've been using a soft mist inhaler then you have to prime this inhaler beforehand. When you take your soft mist inhaler regularly you need to turn the base until it clicks. Once it's clicked you can open the cap, again exhale, then place a seal around the mouthpiece with your lips, start to inhale and as you're inhaling press the dose release button. Continue to inhale and then hold your breath for 10 seconds. Often these soft mist inhalers might have a dose indicator. So it will show me how many doses are left on that inhaler. So it's good for you to keep track of how many you've got left and make sure that you don't run out of your inhaler. These aerosol inhalers work best if you're taking a slow steady breath in. Now let's talk about dry powders in more detail. There are some devices in which you use a capsule. These capsules are for use with the handy inhaler, and they're not tablets to be swallowed. Spireva is an example of a capsule inhaler. 
When you're taking these inhalers, you need to make sure you're sitting upright. Open the dust cap by pressing the piercing button on the side. You then need to open the mouthpiece by pulling it upwards and this will expose the area for you to place the capsule in. Take one of the capsules from the blister pack and insert it into this chamber and then close the mouthpiece until you hear it click. Press the piercing button. You then need to be able to enter your lungs, so breathe out, not into the inhaler. Then place the seal around the mouthpiece and take a sharp, deep breath in. Hold this for 10 seconds or as long as is comfortable. To ensure you have inhaled all of the dose, you may need to repeat the breath section. So exhale fully, take the big breath in and then hold. Once you've completed the second inhalation, you can remove the capsule and dispose of it in the bin. The other type is the dry powder device. Here, the medication is stored as a powder form within the device. To take this inhaler, you slide the cap down until you hear a click and this will pierce the capsule and release the dose of medication. Again, breathe out but not into the device. Create a seal around the mouthpiece and take a sharp breath in and hold it for 10 seconds before breathing out. If any of your inhalers or any of your devices contain a steroid, you must make sure that you rinse your mouth out afterwards with water. This ensures that no medication as residue remains in your mouth to cause infections. And again, Sheffield Teaching Hospitals does have videos demonstrating how to take these inhalers. Spaces are a chamber device that can be added to your MDI inhaler to ensure that you take the most of your medication. If you find that you struggle to hold your breath, then a spacer can help as the chamber will hold the dose so that you're able to inhale it in small, frequent breaths. If you're feeling particularly breathless, then these small breaths allows the medication to be inhaled and it can also help to calm the breathing rather than you trying to hold your breath for 10 seconds. There are different styles and brands of spacers. Examples of these include volumatics, or an aero chamber or an able spacer. The more common types of spacers that are issued are the volumatic, which is a bit more of a larger bulbous spacer, and the aero chamber, which is a smaller one which has a blue end to it. As well as the video clips that our trust has, the Asthma UK website also has some video clips on how to take different inhalers. Inhalers allow medication to be delivered directly to the area they need to affect. In order for them to work best, the technique of taking your inhaler needs to be good. This diagram demonstrates the effectiveness of technique. So a good technique, as indicated by the green spots, has the right force for the breath in and you breathe in for the right amount of time with a good 10 second breath hold. This allows the dose to be inhaled throughout the lungs. A poor technique, as indicated by the orange spots, this occurs when the inhale time has not been long enough or the breath hold time has been too short. Then the medication won't travel as far through the lungs. And sometimes inhalers fail to deliver sufficient doses to the lungs. This is the red dot. This happens when the breath in hasn't been strong enough to draw the medication down through the lungs. When you're having a flare-up, you can increase the use of the reliever inhalers. You can take this up to eight times a day 
and two puffs on each occasion. It can be used as a preparation for physical activity to help to open up the lungs. When taken, it will start to work in five to 10 minutes and last for a short period of time. If it's an emergency situation and you are experiencing a severe episode of breathlessness, then you can take your reliever eight puffs and one go. If this isn't improving, you need to consider medical assistance. Some people may be prescribed nebulised medication. Nebulised medication turns liquid medication into a mist that you can breathe in through a mask or a mouthpiece. At attendance to your GP or A&E in an emergency situation, you may be given a nebulizer. This is because it delivers a large dose of the reliever quickly. But in usual day-to-day -day life, most people do not need such large doses. Other medications which some people may find themselves taking include non-inhaled bronchodilators. These are tablets which help to open the airway, the bronchi. Examples of these are Montelukast or Theophylline. These tablets are mainly prescribed when there is a large asthma component to the condition. There are also mucolytics. These are mainly in tablet form However, they can be given in liquid form in some cases. Mucolytics help to thin the secretions, making it less sticky. There's also steroid tablets, prednisolone. Sometimes these are given as short courses when you have a flare-up. Antibiotics will be prescribed for infections if there's a presence of bacteria. Some people may take long-term antibiotics. And there's also preventative vaccines, such as the flu vaccine, which should be received yearly, and the pneumonia vaccine. If you have any questions about your medication and your inhalers, then you can speak to your practice nurse, a pharmacist, or your GP. Thank you for listening.